We're here on this beautiful Sunday morning. How nice it is to be back on the big screen with all of our dear guests. May Hashem bless you and your families. We are today studying something very special, very holy. And let us understand this together, Bezrat Hashem. We are learning the Benish High in a different parasha, but it's the introduction. He writes something beautiful as follows. You shall go you have a good memory. How do you know this? You shall guard the mitzvah and the hukim and the mishpatim that I command you today. He says it appears to me that there are six hundred and thirteen commandments and they fall into three categories. Number one is called a chok. Chok is something you don't know the reason to. What's an example? Do not wear Hugo Boss. I shouldn't say the Hasid Shalom. That's not what I meant. Do not wear it unless it's fixed. That means you got to take out the shotness from the Hugo. Yeah, shotness is wool and linen. You're not allowed to have wool and linen in the same garment. If it's stitched how together, you, um, how do you, take out the you go to a professional tailor and he either cuts half of your suit away or he, he'll figure it out. That's not the shit, but he's going to... Um, I heard somewhere that... <laughs> The reason why it's not nice is because... Radiation? No, it's because Cain and Hevel. Yeah, that's true. Cain and Hevel. Cain was a uh, farmer. Not a farmer. No, he dealt with the flax and all the vegetation. Whereas Hevel was right son. What about uh, Yeezys? Yeezys. Yeezys have a different issue. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> don't be a goy. I'm kidding. No, Yeezys. I don't know. I don't think they shot this. I don't think they shot this. But if my son came to me one day and tells me I want to get Yeezys, I would start fasting. Billy <laughs> Navy. What? Yeah. Anything. If it applies to carpets, it applies to anything that you get warmth from. No, couches usually don't come to us. Rabbi Jai, the people of the recording will be very disappointed. The group discussions are postponed until after the shiur. Now, do we, does anybody know why we don't wear wool and linen? No. Does anybody know why we don't eat meat and milk? No. Don't listen to what they tell you. Pay special. It's, it's not good for you. It's not good for you. Okay. It's spiritually not good for you. We don't really understand why. The Zohar Kadosh maybe makes a suggestion. But Lema'ase, these are mitzvot that we don't have a real understanding, a real tefisa. He goes down slower. Now, <coughs> you have a second category. They're called mitzvot. They do have a reason. However, they're not logical, their reason. That means if we never got the Torah, we would never do it because it's not logical. And then you have a third section of mitzvot, they're called mishpatim. Mishpatim are logical mitzvot that even if the Torah wouldn't command you, you would still fulfill them. What's an example? Honor your faja and your maja. Honor your parents. That's a mitzvah, that's a mishpat. Yeah, that makes sense. Even if Hashem didn't give us the Torah, you would understand that what? Honor your parents. Says the rabbi, it's impossible for one man to fulfill all 613 of them. But Paul in action. But through thoughts that he thinks, wow, if only I was a coin, I would be able to fulfill this mitzvah. If only I had an opportunity to fulfill the mitzvah of Shiloh Hakem. If only I could wear tefillin. Whatever he thinks in his mind that he has a yearning for, it's as if he fulfills it. They give him sakhar. What's the second category? It's a mitzvah stam that, that the sechel is not mechayiv. <coughs> I don't know, what's an example? Uh, kiddush. Right, you make Kiddush, Zechir Litiyat Mitzrayim. We understand why we make Kiddush as a remembrance. But uh, if, without the Torah, we wouldn't necessarily make Kiddush. Now, it's as if you fulfill the mitzvah. Is it possible in one day to fulfill 613 commandments? No. Okay. In one day? Yes. No. Someone time down. Our pharmaceutical department in the back is a little distracted today. Because of Shabbat. Yes. There are many lists. 
The most famous one is the Rambam's list of Tariyat Mitzvot. Many people learn these 613 commandments in Shavuot. Yeah. Now, guys, we didn't get to the good stuff. I want to reveal to you guys some good stuff today. Okay. He says there are three categories to mitzvot. One is called a mitzvah, one is called a chok, and one is called a mishpat. Corresponding. I like it. Today they're into it. Corresponding. I was going to say it. So, that's it. Trust him. You know it. Uh, uh, Now, can we get to the good part of the shiur? He says there are three pleasures God gave you corresponding to the three categories of mitzvot. What are these pleasures? Number one is the pleasure of taste. You come, you eat bishul, you eat some eggs, you eat some frank fries, etc. That's called a pleasure of ta'am. Of taste. The second one, amen, is the pleasure of smell. And the third one is the pleasure of seeing something nice. Now, I don't know why they don't add the pleasure of listening to music. I don't know. He's going to reveal to us the three levels of Gan Eden. Anybody want to know what the three levels of Gan Eden are? Let us see. Which one of these three pleasures is the main pleasure in this world? Taste, smell, or sight? Sight. sight. What is everyone doing right now around the table? You get the, you get pleasure of sight when you look at the. Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Why are you not eating? I am eating. I ate a whole bagel. Okay, my whole The main pleasure in Olam Azeh is what people spend all their money for. You went on vacation. What did you do? Shashlik in the morning, shashlik in the afternoon. Where did you go? This restaurant, that restaurant. And people are always about eating something. That this is what became the obsession. You go out with someone, where are we going to go to eat? It's not, we're never going to go to look at something or to smell something. We're going to go to eat something. Man? Now, look at the secret. Amen, look at the secret. You have a mouth which sits on the bottom. You have a mouth that sits on the bottom. Above the mouth you have what? The nose. Above the nose what do you have? You have the eyes. Is it coincidental? They are in this sequence. Says the rabbi not at all. The pleasure in Olam corresponds to what? Your mouth. You eat. The main pleasure of this world is alkot. However, you have to know, in Gan Eden, what is the main nourishment, the main battery? That's the lower level of Gan Eden, which is corresponding to your nose. It's a more refined level of body that doesn't need to eat physical food. It's going to be pleasant aromas. In the world above, like it is known. Did you know this? I didn't. I'm kidding. Now let's see this. It's gonna get much better. I wrote in my book, Rav Alim. This is the reason in Baghdad, in the first 12 months when someone passes away, the Yorsheh Niftar, the ones who inherit, to the children of the one who passed away, they bring special rose water. They bring special roses. They bring types of plants, Raichon, Nosboy, Mint. For what to give to people, please smell it and say a beracha. Why? Because the person who passed away, he's now on the level of ruach, of reyach, of scent. And therefore, corresponding to that, they give people bisamim and say, please say, Le'elu Nishmat, my father, that he should have an aliyat neshama. Why? Because his main mazon, his main sustenance is the neshama, is the smell. Now, one second. They sit outside of the synagogue, he says, and they give people Bisamin to smell on their way in and on their way out. They used to give it to the whole community to smell. In the morning and at night, they would give them this outside of the shul. Now, why? Because the niftar, the soul, 
goes to Gan Eden at Tachton, and over there his main nourishment, it's not plov. Rabotai, you should train yourself not to eat so much plov in Olam Azeh. In Shamayim, there's no plov. You're going to go through withdrawal symptoms. It's going to be mamash not good. You know what gives them the most kaif? It's when a child takes it and says, Le'ilu nishmat. And he says a beracha, borei izbe b'samim, borei atze b'samim, borei mine b'samim, depending on what type of spice it is, right? If it's something that has a hard stem, that sits on a tree, it's a bark-like item, like cloves and the like, that's borei atze b'samim. Or star anise, 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 whatever it's called. Also borei atze b'samim. Roses, also borei atze b'samim. If it's something like uh, hadasim, also atze b'samim, it's an ed. What if it's something like nozboi, raichon, mint, Basil, that's all esiv. It's baby samim. Gam yesh tam mivirkat arich limnuhat nevish and itar bikin gam yotob haim haytob olam azay yesh ana ala nishama. Yesterday, who came to our Gemara class? Whoever came to the Gemara class, we said, what is the item that the nishama enjoys? And what did we say? Scent to smell something. Yesterday, sure. No daf mem gimu mizachet berachol. Where are you? The neshama, it's called ruah, right? The spirit, yes? This is very close to the word reyah, which is scent. Scent connects to your neshama. You know what bracha do you say? It's the gentian of prachoit with perfume. You say bore minei geinam. Now. It's corresponding to the level of soul, which is corresponding to the level of scent. That was just a joke. You don't need to hear such bad jokes. <laughs> now, Kemosh Amor Abutel Uzal, Ala Pasuk Ola Neshama Tehal Eliyah. Ezu Dabar Shah Neshama Nehmeh Uzal Reyah. Now he says you have to know, what do you do after Shabbat? After Shabbat you take Bissamim. Why? On Shabbat, you were elevated. You had a higher level of spiritual consciousness. After Shabbat, when it leaves, what do you do? You feel depressed. You feel sad. So you need to pick me up. What are you picking me up? Not the body. You're picking up the neshama. Therefore, you take b'samim and you say beracha. Borei izbeb, borei atzeh b'samim. V'sham b'sipri ha-katan. He ha-evete b'tshuva le-otam anu agim l'amin b'tabel. E'en b'zeh ha-shash b'shum d'hati katam b'shum hanu b'tabel. Chila in hayu d'atam ayre l'am. Okay. Now look at this. Rabotai, this is what I came to reveal today. There are two levels of Gan Eden. One is called Gan Eden at Tahton, the lower level of Gan Eden. That corresponds to the level of? Yeah. Nose. Nose. There's a higher level of Gan Eden. What is less Gashmi? What is less, what is, what is more tangible? Something you eat or something you smell? Something you eat, it's more tangible. What is, ta but when you, smell? Right, Something you smell is on a higher level. What is what is more tangible? Something you smell or something you see? You see? What you smell is more tangible. What you smell is more tangible. What you see is more refined. It's more dark. It's on a higher level. He says after Gan Eden, the lower level Gan Eden, you go into an elevator in the lower level of Gan Eden, and that elevator takes you to the higher level of Gan Eden. It usually happens in Shabbat. There are many, many hundreds of levels, but in the main categories, they're called Gan Eden at Tachton and Gan Eden at Aileon. But each one has its own VIP and VVVVIP and Maki Budam, and I did this mitzvah, and I gave tzedakah, and nobody knew about it. And I learned Torah at night, and nobody knew about it. And I helped people, I helped widows, I helped orphans, I made people feel good about themselves. I was Moser Nefesh. There are levels in Gan Eden. It's not me and him, we're both, uh, we both came to synagogue. You be? When, <laughs> when you came to synagogue, you were playing the stock market. When he came to synagogue, he was with Hashem. Well, any level, it's still good, right? You know what you sound like? I'll give you an example. Imagine you move into a neighborhood in Jamaica, mistake, but you buy that house, the 40 by 100 lot, the one floor with the Kuretnik, what do they call those ceilings? The roofs, the cape? Whatever it is, you got one floor, you yelly, yelly, I want to have bedrooms over there, but I live, where do you live? Jamaica Estates. So what do you mean? Any, any area in Jamaica Estates is good, right? No, you want to be more miruvah. You want to have some space. You want a second floor that's boxed out. You want your kids to have their own room. You want to have space. You want to have more than one bathroom. 
You cannot say, everyone, I made it to Jamaica State. What do you mean? How many bathrooms do you have? Half a bathroom. Tell you, you know. Excuse me for mentioning such a thing, Mr. Rob. But Rabutai, the idea is, is you're right. Gan Eden, to get inside, is very, very lofty. But, but, you want to be in the, in the prime real estate in Gan Eden, you understand? Now, let's finish. After you go through the lower level Gan Eden, you go from there to Gan Eden Aelion. And over there, the Nishama gets benefit just from looking at Hashem's divine glory. You look and you get nourished. Like the Pasuk writes, there is no physical eating and drinking. Tzadikim sit and their atarot, their crowns are on their head and they enjoy from the splendor of Hashem's glory. Now you have to know, Rabotai, the damage you do by looking at something wrong, it's the highest damage you can do. Why? Looking at something wrong. Because the eyes are very, very pure and they are the highest they are the highest element on your face. The highest sense on your face is your eyes. The highest. And therefore, Boris, the damage you can do with your eyes in a split second, it's a thousand times worse than the damage you can do with any other part of your body. The eyes are tremendous, tremendous, tremendous. In Kabbalah, corresponds to the Shem's Shem Al. Пугач, а нужно ли это? Я шучу. Нет, зачем это все надо? Yeah, for what? Yeah. Challenge, if their challenge is only based on reward, right? Meaning based on, I'll give you an example. You want to become a sportsman. You want to exercise. If you want to have 13 inch biceps, you have to exercise two times a week. 40 pound dumbbells, that's it. You got your 13, 14, 15 inch uh, bicep. But if you want to have 18 inch biceps, yeah? Over there already, you're two, uh, two times a week in the gym, uh, 25 minutes is not going to do it. Now you got to spend three hours at the gym. Now you got to rip the muscle. You got to go there four days a week. Oh, you got you to be strong. Yes, you got to be very strong. And the point is, is that the greater the gains, the more there's going to be pain. That's usually the rule. So too, so too, the eyes, the gains you get from the eyes, if you have pure eyes, you'll, you'll understand. You want to bless somebody, it depends on the purity of your eyes. Do you know that? You, it's all in your eyes. The damage you can do with your eyes in a split second. Why? Because the eyes are the most sensitive. They're the windows to the neshama. Whatever you look at, you get an etching on your neshama. It's etched forever on your soul. You could be davening Amidah 26 years from now. And what you looked at when you were a 14-year-old boy with your iPhone. Sometimes those images plague your mind. Why? Because what you look at, it's etched onto the neshama. Now I want to read to you guys a story. There was a rabbi, his name was Rabbi Matiya ben Harash. The Midrash tells us. The rabbi was learning Torah. His face was illuminating. He was a giant. And in his whole life, he never damaged his eyes. Until one day, the Yetzer Ara came to him and said, Hey, Yetzer Ara came to him. And started to bother him. The rabbi got scared. He got nervous. Now we don't try this at home. But the rabbi says to his student, go bring me a nail. He took a nail. He heated it up. And he stabbed, gouged, he stabbed his eyes. This is on a level we don't understand. The question is, why was he so particular about this? Says the rabbi, if you ever have a person who's very careful in one mitzvah, very careful, he's very makfid on the mitzvah, it's a sign that that... He came to fix that mitzvah. It's his team. I will not gouge out my eyes, but I try to guard my eyes, Rabbi Tay. I, you know, all you can do is try. What that means is that I don't go to Manhattan for fun. That's what that means. If I need to be there, I want to buy a ring, an earring, or whatever it is. I'm going to, okay, believe in it. If you have a job, then you have a job. You have a reason to be there. But for fun, on my day off, you're not going to see me there. Oh, you're not going to see me on Coney Island for fun. You know, just chilling, just hanging out. Why? Because you're setting yourself... Okay, so that, if that's your business, that's your business. We're not talking about that. Now, let us understand the secret, Rabotai. This rabbi, Rabbi Matia ben Harash, who was he in the last life? He was a man named Palti ben Laish. You know who Palti ben Laish was? Yeah. David Amelech had a wife. What was her name? Her name was Micha. The daughter of Shaul. 
Shaul took his daughter back, David had to run for his life. He took his daughter back, you see, he said, you want to marry my daughter, you're going to bring me 100 foreskins. Was nice to go foreskin? The Brit Mila chest. David went, he got 200 foreskins. He went, he, he, I guess he killed the Finnish team. <laughs> he wanted to see if he was a strong man, a man of valor. The Finnish team used to bother the Jewish people. So he went and he showed 200 of them. Now one second, one second. He gives them. Now look at this. Look. Look at this, Rabutai. This Palti, I'm sorry, David marries the daughter. Shaul takes back his daughter. He gives her to a man named Palti. Now Palti scratches his head. He said, if, he said, I cannot live with you like a man and wife. You're a married lady. You were married to David. So what did he do? He took a sabia yeah. and he put it in between himself and the girl. This is reasonable. And he said, I'm not going to come on your side. You're not going to come on my side. He behaved himself. However, he was such a big tzaddik. He still did a damage. What was his damage? He still used to look. He still got some, huh? He still had an ah. Uh, just understand to what levels a person can reach. Now, one second. In the end, in the end, he came in a reincarnation. As which rabbi? As this rabbi, Rabbi Matia ben Haraj. Now he's very particular what his eyes see. Why? Because his whole reason he came to the world was to perfect his eyes. Now he's particular. He went and he pokes his eyes, which we're not supposed to do. That's not for our generation. We're not on that level. Hashem, Hashem sends an angel, Raphael, and he says, go heal the rabbi. The rabbi says, I don't want to be healed. Leave me alone. I don't want to be tested. He says to him, I give you a promise. You're never going to be tested in this area again. I give you a slova. And the, uh, the, the, the Midrash says the rabbi was healed and he wasn't tested anymore. But let's understand from here, Abu Tai, when you see somebody very particular, very particular in certain mitzvah, he's particular to always pay back his debts. That's sometimes to Siman that in the last life there was a lot of defaults on his part. You know, he's very particular to make sure he's very honest, very honest. He doesn't want a dime that's not his. That's, that's sometimes to Siman that in the last life he was a little, he came to fix this area. So don't tell him, ah, relax, why are you so fanatic? It's just a dollar, you think he cares? No, no, that could be the whole reason he came to this world, to fix this, that sin. And therefore, he's so particular not to take. You know, some guys, they go to the store, yeah? And let's say it's, I don't know what, it's uh, the, the, the bill is $7.32, yeah? So if the owner of the restaurant says, give me seven thirty, you give him seven thirty. If it's not the owner of the restaurant, make sure to give him those two cents. Even though, who cares about two cents? You think somebody cares about it? No, 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 but you should be careful. Why? Not because, because, because at the end of the day, that's what it costs, and that's what you gotta pay for it. Why? To make sure you don't taste any taste of sin. You don't taste any taste, and you're gonna say, who cares about the few pennies? Remember Mr. Sasso last week, we gave an example. You owe somebody a million dollars and 21 cents. The guy's not gonna nudge you for the 21 cents. But you should always try, we should always try to butai, to be very careful with our parnasa, that everything has to be exact. You don't cheat your employees, you don't cheat your merchandise, you don't cheat your, I don't know, whatever yeah, it is. What if you're already broke? What if you're already broke? We thank the Regid Rizal, we want to bless everyone with a beautiful week. May Hashem help us to come to our Tikkun to realize that our eyes are the whole power. Everything is in your eyes. Your mazal, in your eyes. The more you protect your eyes, the more purity you draw to yourself, the holier you... Now, that doesn't mean you have to walk like this. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is, don't walk the streets like this. Can I just suggest something? If they're going to call themselves a man, why don't they just like this? Once they get into the environment where someone is, they're going to go like that. It's not true. No, but if you're okay with it. You're not supposed to be okay with it. You're not it's not true. 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 It's